Hi, welcome to the second part in this series of demonstrations introducing InfoPath 2007. In the first part, I showed an example of a rich InfoPath form. In this part, I will show you how easy it is to create a complex InfoPath form with no need for code. When I open up InfoPath, I'm presented with this window asking me what I want to do. I will go down to this option on the left, Design a Form Template. Now I'm given a choice of different types of form template, as well as the option to create a template part. The idea of template parts is to create a section of the form that can be included in lots of different forms, meaning it's quicker to produce each of these forms because you don't have to repeat work. For this demo, I'll choose to work from a blank start. The other options include wizards to make it easier to set up connections to databases, web services and other data sources. Now I have a blank form template. Almost everything I need to create a form is available from this series of task menus down the right hand side. I'll go to layout. When I create a form, I almost always start by inserting a table with a title. This gives the form its structure, holding the various elements together. I'll give this form a title. Now I'll create a larger area for the form content by inserting a custom table. I get to choose how many rows and columns I would like to include in this table. If I change my mind later, I can always insert or delete rows and columns, merge cells together, or alter the size of various parts of the table. The point of the form is to enter information, so I'll go back to the task menu. Now I'll go to the controls menu. InfoPath offers me a range of controls that I can include in my form. These give various capabilities. However, if they aren't enough for what you need, there is an option to write custom controls that can be used in all your forms. I'm going to insert a field for users to enter their name. If I right click on this field, I can go to the properties and give the field a name. This makes it easier if I want to reference the contents of this field in logic or functions. Now I'll give them a field to enter the date, in the same, same way I will name this field. I can also set a default value. I can type in a value if I want it to be fixed, or I can use a formula to calculate the value. Now I will insert a function. It has a lot of built-in functions that I can use. And the one I'm going to choose is today. This is a function that, as you might expect, will insert the date of the day that the form is being filled out on. Now, I've inserted a text box for this control, but what if I really wanted to include a date picker instead? I could delete the text box, but since I've already changed the properties, I don't want to lose that work. If I right click on the field, one of the options I've got is change to. I have a list of controls that I can convert this text box to without losing any of the changes I've made to it. So I'll go down to Date Picker. I can include various other controls just by selecting them from the menu on the right. Here I've inserted a pair of option buttons. I'll just change the labels to something more useful. One of the things I showed in the previous demonstration was the ability to hide or show parts of the form based on answers to questions. I'll show you how to put in a section that can be hidden. First, I'll just select to insert a new section. In this new section of the form, I can include controls and text in the same way as I could in the rest of the form. Now I need to set the formatting so that this section only turns up when the option button is set to yes. One of the options in the menu is conditional format. If I add a condition, I can set a rule about how I want this section to appear. 
It's a simple matter to select the field name of the option buttons, select is not equal to, and then enter 1. This is because the default value of the first option button is 1. Now that I've selected the rule, I need to choose what to do. I'll check to hide this control. Now, when I click OK, this makes it so that when the form is filled out, users will only see this section if they click Yes on the Option button. If they don't check the box or they check, select No, they will never see this section. Another feature that I showed in the first example was a repeating table. This is a table that allows the user to insert as many new rows as needed. This control is built in. It's a simple matter of selecting this option from the menu and choosing the number of columns I want to have. Now I want to do some arithmetic. I want the third column of this table to add up the numbers entered in the first two. I'll change this text box to an expression box so that the users won't be able to change the data in it. Now I will set the value. As with adding the date function, I will select this formula button. Now I will insert the fields for the first two columns. It's a simple matter of putting a plus sign between them. So if I click OK, that default value will be set. Now when a user enters numbers in the first two columns, the function in the third will show the result. But at the moment, it would be possible for a user to enter anything in those first two columns, so I will set the properties to only allow numbers. The same can be done in exactly the same way on the other field, simply by choosing the options built into InfoPath. So, in just a few minutes, I've created a form with a variety of input controls, a section that is hidden or shown based on input, a table with insertable rows, and some functions performed on the data entered. And I didn't have to write a single line of code to do so.